Hello my garden friends, this is Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com and I am back to my first permaculture garden, reclaiming my first permaculture garden and we're in the backyard and I wanted to show you my progress. Now if I'll, I'll link to the first video in the description, but if you remember or if you haven't seen it yet, this area of the backyard was completely overgrown. The entire backyard was completely overgrown. Um, we did have renters in this house for over four years. Um, and my uh, permaculture planting was to grow productive plants and is uh, at our new house, um, is to grow productive plants as much as possible. And of course, ornamental plants, natives that will bring in pollinators and serve an ecological purpose uh, in the garden. So in this area, there was, this is where I put my first hugel culture bed. Um, and when I did that, I dug a pit that was four by eight and I buried uh, logs that I had on site uh, when we took a tree down and leaf litter and uh, there was a raised bed here. So that's now gone. Uh, there are asparagus and sunchokes that come up in this area, but there were many, many other things too, including seedlings of Nanking cherry, uh, pretty substantial elderberry, and lots and lots of viney stuff, and black cherry, and um, eastern redbud had come up, just all kinds of weedy things. So I cleared it all out, and it's so great to have it really cleared out and those asparagus had not been cut yet this season so i did cut them down to ground level and now they'll regrow and they have plenty of room to do that and as they come up i'll label them so that whoever buys this property knows what's growing and then they can decide to cut it down including the sunchokes that's a little lone comfrey sitting out there by itself but this was the site of next to that bed that was where my compost situation was. So I'm not really surprised. I had a big compost pile in an enclosure. I'm not really surprised that so much sprang up in this area because of all the seeds from the compost and because the soil was fantastic because of the compost. Um, this, uh, I'm uncovering the annual beds that I had here. You wouldn't know it from this section, but, um, as we move over, you can see I've uncovered a pathway. Here's a garden bed with a giant fennel in the middle of it and another path and another garden bed uh, that I'm just, I've pulled out a sea of mugwort, as you can see in this bed, covered in mugwort and very thorny blackberry canes that I am just, I'm ripping out because Anybody who gets this property and has to be in this situation, it's not gonna be fun to get rid of or deal with or even harvest from these very thorny blackberry canes when you can easily plant thornless varieties that are much easier to deal with. And look at that, um, elderberry just popping up in the middle of there. Um, <clears throat> so lots of mugwort. That's what was in this bed. That's what was in this bed. Um, and right there is a bird that's probably pretty annoyed that I'm taking all these blackberries away, but I'll have to deal with it. This was covered, covered, covered in hardy kiwi vines. And I'm not surprised that our tenant mentioned that the last couple of years they hadn't been producing. And it's really because this one was very dead, though it was strung up all over the support, it was, there are some sprouts coming from the bottom, but for, substantially dead. This one was very much alive. And when I cut it all, it's still, still just pouring out sap. Kiwi are just amazing for the amount of sap that they can push during the growing season. If a kiwi gets wounded, 
man, it's sad and it's rough on the kiwi. You can see it just pouring out and dripping and it's been dripping for a couple of hours now. Um, I don't know if it will recover, but tough because look at what it's done to my apple trees. This gala apple tree is completely surrounded by kiwi vines entangled. Um, I have a lot to do when it comes to untangling this mess of kiwi. Uh, there are some other trees in there that I did not plant, so I need to take this down. Um, this is a honey crisp apple, and there's another uh, Granny Smith, but I see a pretty substantial tree in the middle there that I didn't put. There's a lot left to do, guys, but I am impressed by the progress so far. I'm very happy with it, and I'm not overwhelmed because I just need to take it one step at a time, and I'll get through it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this is me reclaiming my first permaculture garden. Lisa, Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video and comment. And I will keep you up to date with future progress. And we'll see how this looks when it's all said and done. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.